By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Anna, who is playing with a Living Plains deck. So I'm really excited. I haven't played against that deck often. And I'm playing with the Beast's Toy, so that's my Mono Black Guardian Beast artifact built. Now, before we go to the games, I'm first going to do a little bit of deck tech, showing you the deck pictures and kind of explaining what these two decks are trying to do. Now, if you would like to go straight to the games, you can do that as well by going to the description below, and there you will find a timestamp, and that will take you directly to the games. So for now, let's look at these decks. So the first deck that we are going to talk about is my deck and I'm playing with a mono black deck. Well, you could say a black and brown because I'm playing with a lot of artifacts and it's very much based on the two guardian beasts that are in the deck and the four uh, discs that are in the deck. So the idea is that I play disc, blow everything up and because of the beast I can do it again. And if the beast is not on the table yet, it's also fine because I have four discs so I don't have to kind of hold back. I have enough discs to explode them over and over again. So uh, what I want to do after an explosion is kind of use my play set of animate deaths to get valuable creatures out of the graveyards and kill my opponent with that. And to kind of help me get to that uh, mid game, late game where I want to be because then you have enough mana to actually play your disc and, and play your um, Guardian Beast because Guardian Beast obviously has great synergy with uh, the disc. I am playing with uh, four Dark Rituals to kind of speed up the game. I'm playing with four Sinkholes to slow my opponent down and trying to win that tempo game. I'm playing with four uh, Mishra's Factories, so they're also great for early blocking. And of course I'm playing with Hypnotic Spectres, uh, arguably the strongest creature in uh, Black Old School, and that's going to put immediate pressure on the table. So those are kind of my tricks to stretch the game into the mid and the long game, because that's where I want to be with this particular deck. Now let's look at the deck of Anna. The Living Plains deck. Now obviously this card, this deck is revolving all around this card, Living Plain. It's a card from the Legends and it says all lands in play are now 1-1 one, one creatures and they're still lands as well. They, so they can still produce mana but they can also attack and they can also die to, well, blocking or getting blocked or damage and that's a very important one they can die to damage direct damage or pinging for instance and maybe you've noticed there is a full play set of protocol sorcerers of timmies in this deck how cool is that and those timmies are in there for a reason because when you play living playing all lands in the game return turn into one one creatures including the lands of your opponent so what you can do then is you use your protocol sorcerers to kill the lands of your opponent, to kind of ping them one at a time. Now, the great thing with this deck is you can actually create a lock because when your opponent play, plays out a new land, the land has summoning sickness because it's also a creature, meaning it has to stay in the game an entire turn before your opponent can use it. So you have an entire turn to get rid of that uh, land. And when you have protocol sorcerers in play, that's going to be very, very easy. Now, another really nice card here in this list is the card Falling Star. Now the rules of Falling Star have changed recently. So what you can do now with Falling Star is you can take four cards and kind of put them next to each other in kind of a square. They cannot overlap. And then from uh, one feet, just like with a Chaos Orb, you need to flip it. And everything it touches get, gets three damage. So that means um, that you can put four lands together when you have Living Plane on the battlefield. And if you flip correctly, you can kill four lands with one Falling Star. So I'm really excited and looking forward to kind of see that happen in this matchup. Will he be able to use his Falling Star? Now, another card I just want to point out when looking at this list, two cards actually, which I think are pretty cool, and that's Honest Plan B. So his Plan B is Sheevan Dragon. And you see it there at the top. He's playing with two Sheevan Dragons. So if all else fails, he's going to smash me with Sheevan Dragons. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this uh, to this match. So let's quickly go to game one and see what happens. Game number one, and I'm sitting on the left side there uh, with my Guardian Beast deck, and on the right side it's Anna with his Living Plane deck. And I really like his play map, by the way, beautiful. Vesuvian Double Ganger, it's just uh, such an epic card, beautiful art. Trying to play it in a deck of mine. 
But let's focus on this match. And I'm playing a Swamp, and Anna is starting here with eight Birds of Paradise turn one. And they're playing a Library of Alexandria. That's pretty good for me. And look at that. He's playing a Timmy, a Protocol Sorcerer, on the board. And playing a second Swamp. Am I going to play a Sinkhole? Or do I want to keep cards here? I think I can play a sinkhole and I'm kind of debating what to get rid of choosing the forest because of the living plane knowing that living plane is costing two forests to cast so that's my reasoning and he's playing an ancestral recall look at that filling his hand up so that's kind of fair considering I have a library here active library drawing an extra card from that library and that single is really setting my opponent back at least one turn and playing a disrupting scepter so hopefully I can start taking out some cards and look at that he's pinging me there with the Timmy well done oh living plane and that means look at that living plane he's killing my library of Alexandria immediately so living plane means that all the lands in play are turning into 1-1 one -one creatures and you have summoning sickness so I can only use the lands that I already have in play. So you see that new land is kind of on the right side there because I can't use it. Playing a Hypnotic Spectre, but it's looking very grim for me with that Protocol Sorcerer there on the table. And look at that, playing a Lightning Bolt. Oh, and this is cool, it's playing a Falling Star. And this is what I talked about in the introduction. This is, <laughs> this is really nice. So he's putting them together. I've put it in slow-mo here. And bam, look at that flip. So he's hitting three cards. So that means all three lands are gaining three damage and they're one, one creatures, remember, because of living plane. So I'm losing three lands. Wow, and this is brutal. I mean, when he's killing my last land with the Prodigal Sorcerer. So I have no lands in hand and every land that I play out has summoning sickness. Now remember, I'm playing underpowered so I can't win. And that's kind of what I'm showing him here. Wow, what a cool game. First game with that Falling Star action. The first Falling Star action here on the channel. Thank you, Anna, for this. And uh, it, it does mean I lose. So let's go to game number two. Game number two. So I'm behind one game, but I don't mind losing in such a cool fashion, man. That Falling Star. Very, very cool action indeed. At least I get to start. Did I get to start last game? I think I did. Anyway, it didn't help me. Uh, look at that good start here from Anna with that Mox there and the Taiga and oh, but this is nice I know I know it's nasty. I know it's a mind twist, but hey man I'm taking everything I can get because I don't want to end up in a lock again So I get to pick three cards here from Anna's hand and he's losing a Timmy He's losing a Shivan Dragon and he's losing a lightning bolt here. So that's gonna go to the bin and That's not too shabby And I'm passing turn I think especially the Protocol Sorcerer is very helpful here because I don't want to see that uh, hitting the table again, turn two, turn three, and then having, or turn two in this case, and then having another living plane turn four. There's a strip mine taking care. Oh, and look at that, also a single. This is pretty brutal here. So all he has left is a single mox, and he's responding with a strip mine as well. This is starting to look like an EC game here with just little permanence on the table. And again, finding that uh, Library of Alexandria, but it's not really going to help me here. And look at that. Casting a living plane here because of that Black Lotus. And that means once again that my lands have summoning sickness. Am I just going to attack now? Why not? I am not. I'm playing, oh, interesting, playing a in Dark Ritual into a Guardian Beast. Not really that useful, but at least it is a 2-5 body. And look at it, a terror. So I'm, <laughs> look at a fist bump, because I'm now kind of playing the game that Anna wants to play. So I'm saying, hey man, all of a sudden I can tear your lands. That's pretty cool. So I guess the land was terrified. And attacking just with two here with one land and a guardian beast. Not sure why I'm not attacking with the other ones, but dealing three damage, and now I'm attacking with full force, dealing five damage here. And Anna's not drawing anything, so he's kind of stuck here. And remember, uh, his land also have summoning sickness. So I guess his plan kind of backfired on him here in game number two. He's already on five life, and I think I can just kill him. I, I don't know why I'm... Okay, I guess I want to play a disc first and try to empty the board completely, because I could have killed him already. Playing a sinkhole... Drawing a card and then attacking. 
and that's it. I mean, this was this was really no game. I had full control from the start here, um, and I was taking advantage of that living plane by terroring on his lands here. Pretty cool stuff. Um, it's 1-1, one, one, so that means we're getting a third game. Exciting. Game number three. So let's see who gets to win this match. Will I win with my Guardian Beasts, or will my opponent win with the Timmies and the living plane? Uh, it's Anna on the play here for the first time, at least. He's playing a Taiga. No Mox here. I'm just playing a single swamp, playing a tropical island there. Beautiful cards. And playing a Mishra's factory. So apparently, oh, and look at that. Interesting. From the sideboard, there is an energy flux. So that means that for every artifact I control, I have to pay an upkeep of two or else I lose the artifact. But I don't have any artifacts in play yet, so it's not a problem now. Am I, I'm i playing Scenic Poltergeist, so we talked a little bit about this card at the start. Or did we? I don't think we did, actually. This is an Antiquities card. It's a 1-1. One, one. It's two black and one. And what you can do, you can tap it to animate a non-creature artifact, and it comes to life. And it gains power and toughness equal uh, to the casting cost. So in old school, it's a really great way to kill Moxon because a Mox is zero casting cost. So you turn it into a zero, zero creature and it dies. Look at that, there's a Mox. So, ooh, a mind twist. So I'm getting that back. I mean, that's how karma works, right? I had that mind twist in game two and now Ana is, is giving me a mind twist. This is gonna be a really difficult game for me already. And look at that, losing a JDM Tome. Uh, losing a disc and losing a Mishra's factory. Maybe the factory is the worst actually because I just could have played it directly. Um, and there I make it into a 0-0 zero, zero creature to Mox Jet. So the Mox Jet uh, dies. And I'm just actually pointing out to me that he wouldn't have kept it alive anyway because of his own energy flux. But you never know that. And hey man, you can kill a Mox of Vixen Poltergeist. I think you have to do it. When you can do that, you know, just do it. And let's see, can I do anything with four mana? I'm just passing turn. And Anna having here the ability to maybe play land number four and casting a living plane. Okay, he's casting a protocol sorcerer. So the Timmy can actually ping my Xenic Poltergeist. If you don't know this card, by the way, I would definitely recommend you checking out the art. It's a beautiful art in a, on the Xenic Poltergeist. And we're kind of having this discussion, don't know what it's about, but I'm about to lose my Xenic Poltergeist. That's what I do know, so I might as well attack with it. Uh, I guess I'm going to first cast something. No, I'm first going to attack. Taking the damage, going to 19, and casting the Abyss. Okay, that's actually pretty cool in this match, although it doesn't work very well with those factories that my opponent has on the table. Remember, if he's going to play a Living Plane, then all the lands are creatures, and... That means, oh, this is interesting. He's actually choosing to ping me and not the Xenic Poltergeist, so I'm going to 19. But what I wanted to say, if he plays a Living Plane, all the lands, oh, and he's gonna flip. Okay, that's cool. Let's put it on slow-mo. There comes the flip on the, oh, look at that. It bounces off the Abyss and onto the Xenic Poltergeist, so it's a miss. Oh, I'm really lucky here. He, he flipped, just to clarify, he flipped on the Abyss, but he missed it and it bounced off. Okay, very lucky here. So the Abyss stays alive. But uh, what I wanted to say prior to this happening is that those factories are not great for me here because he can still activate the factories and hit me for four uh, every turn. And uh, I cannot use my terror against them because they're artifact creatures and the Abyss is not working against them. So let's see. And that's exactly what he's going to do, although he's just attacking me with one and pumping it up to it three three playing the disc here and again the disc i mean it's a good card but it's not gonna save me from those uh pesky factories in this case so what i kind of need well what do i need because if i play a creature it's gonna die so i i guess i just need mishra's factories myself as well and we're having a little Talk and I think they're bringing dinner here because I'm seeing a, a fork and a knife or I should say lunch because this is the afternoon that we're playing There's another energy flux doesn't really matter that much And he's hitting me for four going to 12 Playing another disc. It's not really gonna help me. It's not looking great for me 
So despite that miss or flip, and I'm going to eight life. Oh, and now I've got to pay for the energy flux, fluxes, as Anna is pointing out. I'm on eight. I have to do something. I'm just passing turn. Oh, of course, when he attacks with the factories, I can activate my disc and I can blow up the factories as well. So at least that's something I can do. So I guess I'm still kind of alive. I'm hanging on a threat. And yeah, putting the abomination there in the middle of the table. Really cool card. I, I guess I haven't put it in the sideboard. Or maybe we didn't sideboard. I'm not sure, actually. Um, and he's passing on a paying for the disc again. So he's choosing not to attack. And now we're in kind of in this standstill situation, what you sometimes see with these control cards on the board with the disc and the abyss on the uh, on the battlefield. You're kind of choosing just to draw a card, fill your hand, and, and pass turn. And that's what happens here in passing turn. And Anna is taking a card. And let's see if he's going to pass turn as well. And he's playing a soul ring here. And playing a Wheel of Fortune. Okay, that's pretty cool. And I'm responding by, I guess, yeah, playing out a Dark Ritual. Why not? Or else I would have have to discard the Ritual anyway. So I'm just drawing three cards. Uh, just having three mana in my pool. I mean, maybe it's going to be useful. I don't think so. I don't play with a lot of instant spells. I think actually Dark Ritual. Oh, yeah, and I've got uh, Terror. Those two are the only ones. So the mana is going away. And because we're playing Swedish, there is no mana burn. Just to clarify. And taking on my turn here, having to pay the cost again for the disc. Playing a strip mine, so that's nice. And we're still, even after this Wheel of Fortune, I still feel we're kind of in this standstill because of that disc. So Anna kind of has to provoke me here. Uh, well, he doesn't have to do anything, but maybe it's wise to provoke me here uh, to uh, activate that disc. <coughs> and it's playing another <laughs> Mistress Factory. I mean, this is not really an incentive for me to, to blow up the disc uh, right now. I really want to wait until it activates those pesky Mishra's factories and I'm just playing another land and I think I'm just gonna pass I, I also have a full play set of sinkholes in my deck so maybe oh yeah look at that that's the first sinkhole so I'm taking care of one of the Mishra's factories with a sinkhole I still have that um, strip mine there so I can use that as well to take care of another sinkhole four mana it looks like I want to tap and play something This is an interesting game. I mean, oh, and look at that. I am actually playing the Guardian Beast. Interesting move because because of the Abyss, I'm going to have to sec it. But if I use my disc at the end of turn, the Abyss goes out. But then again, I also lose. So basically, this is just going to give me one free flip with the disc that's that's basically what i've done and it gets rid, rid of the abyss and that means that i can start using my animate debts because i have animate debts in my deck as well i'm sure i have some in my hand i mean i've drawn so many cards and wow look at this a mind twist and he's playing a lightning bolt on me so i'm twisting his entire hand and there is oh look at that hand do i see a shivan dragon there Playing another sinkhole, so he's lost his factory as well. I am on five life, but things are kind of looking up for me here. And Anna just has one card because of that brutal mind twist. And playing a strip mine on his factory in response to the activation. So what can I do here? Oh, wow. Using that disrupting scepter to take care of the last card in his hand. And taking that card, that Chivan Dragon out of the graveyard look at that wow so i have his shivan dragon now and it's a beautiful one i believe it's a, a beta shivan dragon so looking forward to swing with that and i still have that disrupting scepter kind of forcing on to use the card in his hand and if he doesn't he knows i'm going to use the scepter so i know the card is not going to be very valuable or maybe it's going to be an instant spell that's of course a possibility first attacking and that means He's going, oh, of course, it's, it's a 4-5 it's a because of the animated. So that means it's going to 15. Taking care of the Falling Star. 
thinking a little bit, playing a demonic tutor, am I going to find maybe a drain life or maybe, oh, a second anime dad, that's, that's even cooler. Look at that, I've got both of his beta Shivan dragons and he's not playing white, so I'm not sure if he has any removal. Oh, wow, this is pretty cool. He's playing a living plane and that makes it really difficult. But I am playing a drain life and that means I'm draining him. He's going to eight and then attacking with two Sheevans and that's enough. It fits. Wow. And that means I win this game and I win this match. And it's two to one for the Beast's Toys. But what a cool deck is this Living Plains deck. I mean, it gave me the opportunity to play with two beta Sheevan dragons. I mean, that's just incredibly cool to see two of those dragons at your side of the battlefield. Thank you for this match. And thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. If you would like to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, spreading the message. I'm still trying to reach those thousand subscribers. So I'm, I believe we're, uh, we're close to 800 now. So uh, thank you for that. And thank you for all the positive feedback that I've been getting. If you'd like to see more old school magic games and matchups, you can click on the links. The, the videos are appearing right now on the screen. Or of course, visit the channel. We have lots and lots of content over there. If you have any cool decks or cool ideas, just post a reply under this vid. And uh, yeah, let's see if we, you know, if we can make it happen. If you say, you know, I'm missing this deck or I have a really cool deck and I'd like to play it on your channel, just let me know. For now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic and see you next time. <laughs>